Well, welcome to Bruno. Welcome to the first Tech Talk after the summer break, where, as you can imagine, we have quite a few things to talk about, but we're going to focus on just a few little things. Now, you might have seen that on Friday we had Marc Marquez, Danny Pedroza and Jorge Lorenzo all try new aerodynamic fairings. Now, why do they have these fairings? Well, those are the same concepts that you'd have with Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Aprilia. They've all had these things, uh, you know, quite early on in the year. Um, numerous things that they want to achieve. They want more weight on the front for a little bit more feeling and turning. It can also help a little bit uh, with setup in the braking zones. But the main thing is the anti-wheelie concept. But we've already covered that quite a bit. So I wanted to explain something to you that has something to do with anti-wheelie, but not with the electronics, nor with the aerodynamics of the bike. And this all came about because quite a few people once said to me, look, Dylan, sometimes when the bikes come out of a corner and go onto the straight, they kind of weave along. They do sort of almost an S shape to get to the next corner rather than taking what you might say is the shortest line as in picking the bike up straight and then heading straight for this. So I thought I'd explain a little bit why because there is a bit of a concept behind that. Now we need to talk about various things and the first thing is the center of gravity. The combined center of gravity between the rider and the bike. So let's say it's a sort of a relatively central point if you're looking at the bike from the back as it's coming out of a corner. If the bike is completely upright, the center of gravity is at its highest possible point. However, if the rider comes out of a turn, accelerates, but leaves the bike lent over for a little bit longer, as you can see, when the bike is leaning, the center of gravity is that little bit lower. So that's already helping the bike not to wheelie too much. Now you might say, well, look, can't you just make the bike a bit lower through a setup change? Well, you could, but then you'd probably lose a few advantages in other parts of the track. Plus that change would be millimeters whilst leaning the bike moves the center of gravity quite a bit more. So that's one of the reasons why you will see them almost not really being completely straight, uh, sorry, upright on a straight. Then of course, there's the other thing. Think of a tire, look at the shape of a tire. Where is the diameter the biggest? The diameter is the biggest right down the center. Now, as you move out towards the edge, because the tire is round, the diameter of the tire actually gets smaller. So. As you're leaning the bike, you're on essentially what is a smaller diameter. So for the same amount of revs, you are actually getting more turns of the rear wheel. Hence, you get better acceleration. So if you're at, say, 13,000 RPM with the bike upright or leaning over a little bit, those same revolutions are going to push the bike further and faster. Just to relate that maybe very quickly to a real life example, if you have gears on the rear wheel of your bike, if you're in first gear, you can pedal quite lightly, but the bike's not going to move forward very quickly. But if you pedal the same speed and you're in a higher gear, the bike is, of course, going to accelerate that much faster. Of course, it's harder to pedal. Uh, it's going to be harder for the MotoGP bike, but these things have so much horsepower, so that doesn't really matter. But I now hope you understand that, uh, that there is a concept behind the riders riding in this certain way, taking this S line as they go from one corner to the next on a straight. So the next time you see that, just remember, center of gravity and diameter of the tire.